All right, welcome back. So I had stopped here. These were the three mechanisms for how hormones are controlled. And I thought I had given you a picture in your PowerPoint, but I didn't. And I actually gave you this one on your page now. So here is my example of negative feedback. See, it has set point 20 degrees Celsius. That's a uh, room temperature. Room temperature decreases uh, response, or uh, excuse me, room temperature increases cuts off the heater it says room temperature decreases and it just keeps going like that um, this would be I guess if it's cold outside this one uh, room temperature decreases turns the heater on room temperature increases you can see this little loop here that's what negative feedback is Negative feedback is a loop like that. Yeah, see this? Uh, we don't do the hypothalamus hormones, but here's the pituitary gland and actually controls the thyroid gland. And what it's showing is when these hormones start being released, they go back up and they shut off the ones that are being secreted here. And you got to have that, otherwise you'll have uh, health conditions. You can't have too much of something in your bloodstream. Okay, I hope that helps. So, I'm going to go through the first half of these, and then one more video, and I'll finish the last of it. So, here are the hormones. Now, what you're going to have to do is you have to know what gland are the hormones being produced from, and then what are the functions of the hormone, and all the names associated with everything. The pituitary gland is called the hypothesis, and it's got two lobes. It's actually got three lobes. Um, we don't really cover the, the middle one. But uh, it's got an anterior and a posterior lobe. The anterior lobe is called the adenohypophysis. And this is a pretty good example. So remember, it hangs down from the brain. Here's the anterior lobe. Here's the posterior lobe. Uh, that's an okay picture. The anterior lobe is actually a little bigger than the posterior lobe is. But remember the cella tersica in the brain? That's what, That sits right down inside that. So... Didn't mean to do that. Anyway, so here are some functions of what's called growth hormone, or GH. And make sure you know all the abbreviations for these hormones. Has growth promoting and metabolic actions. It does cause an increase in cell size. Um, it increases the rate of amino acids being transferred across cell membranes. That uh, You're talking about muscle there. Growth hormone does cause an increase in muscle size. Uh, it does. It is a fat burning hormone. Increases fat metabolism, muscle mass. Uh, it does cause bone development. Uh, people that take too much growth hormone, if they were, let's say, they're taking uh, growth hormone and steroids for sports, if you've already reached your height, you're going to reach. It actually makes bones thicker, um, and yeah, it does cause bone development, and it does increase in what's called protein. Uh, synthesis which goes along with the increase in muscle mass the rate of amino acids being transferred across membranes all that together ends up um, an overall increase in size and, and growth hormone causes all cells to increase but it really has effects on muscle and bone okay you have to know this as well um, hypofunction in other words person doesn't have enough growth hormone causes dwarfism um, here, I'll make this big. Uh, so here's an example. In other words, bones ossify too early because growth hormone is one of those hormones. If you remember what's called in um, the growth plate, the epiphyseal discs that are in the ends of long bones, growth hormone keeps those cartilage. Um, growth plates is what they're called. Don't have enough. Uh, it causes dwarfism. Too much growth hormone. Uh, prior to puberty would be, um, well, it's gigantism, but excessive height after puberty, it's called, um, the name just left me, um, acromegaly, sorry, all the facial features get bigger. So, yeah, that's supposed to be sort of a person that has that. Here's an example. That's not the greatest picture. These came out of textbooks, but... Yeah, see how tall this person is? That's an excess amount of growth hormone. 
prolactin uh, is milk production following childbirth and I'm just gonna bounce back over here this is actually a really good um, slide to go through when you're looking at these we're not doing the hypothalamic hormones which that's good you can see some of the names there prolactin releasing inhibiting hormone prolactin releasing factor which causes it so here's growth hormone bone muscle and fat you know I said it actually is a fat metabolic hormone here's prolactin causes milk production following childbirth thyroid stimulating hormone causes the thyroid to release its hormones and then this over here is adrenal corticotropic hormone or ACTH it stimulates the adrenal cortex those sit right on top of the uh, the, the adrenal glands sit right on top of the kidneys and then this one over here, these two luteinizing hormones, this is called a corpus luteum. It causes that to form. Uh, it's, a, it's basically what's left of a follicle after an egg has been ejected. Uh, it's a reproductive hormone. And then follicle stimulating hormone causes these little follicles to become mature. And it also causes sperm production uh, in the testes. Um yeah I don't have it on there but um there we go so that's all of those so here is thyroid stimulating hormone adrenal corticotropic hormone follicle stimulating hormone and then here's luteinizing hormone and um, anyway in males it has a different name it's called interstitial cell stimulating hormone it stimulates these things that are called interstitial cells or cells of Leydig and they produce testosterone. So if a male is deficient in luteinizing hormone, uh, probably gonna be sterile because they're not gonna produce testosterone and then they're not gonna produce sperm. Hormones of the posterior lobe, uh, antidiuretic hormone causes the kidney tubules to conserve water. What that means is um, if you drink a gallon of water, which is a lot, uh, you're going to lose some of that in urine and you're going to keep quite a bit of that depending on how hydrated you were that hormone allows the kidneys to retain water when necessary so it controls water uh, loss through the kidneys uh, not enough antidiuretic hormone is called diabetes insipidus and what that means it happens to babies um, if you had diabetes insipidus, if you drank a glass of water in 30 minutes, you would lose the glass of water in urine. You wouldn't keep anything. So antidiuretic hormone does that. Oxytocin tocin or OT, um, that actually causes menstrual cramps in the uterus. So there's a point where uh, when a person is, when I've, somebody's going to give birth, the baby moves down into the birth canal and there's some stretching of the cervix and there's a certain number involved with that and that number the in other words the degrees or the length of the stretch is the stimulus for oxytocin to be released and it does start labor contractions once that starts it doesn't stop till a baby's born um thyroid gland hmm. okay thought i had them bolded Thyroid is in the middle of the throat. So right here, it's kind of an extreme picture. So you see it there. Uh, showed you some videos in the lab about that. Uh, it produces three hormones. And yeah, if you cut the thyroid in half, you get follicles and then follicles store the T3 and T4 in something called a colloid, little jelly-like material. But these are the three hormones. These numbers, the four and the three, they indicate how many iodine atoms are needed to synthesize those hormones. Thyroxin requires four, triiodothyronine requires three. And these two control metabolic rate, they control development of the and maturation of the nervous system. Um, that's really the main two things they do. They do also uh, help with bone development. <clears throat> but yeah, and. Um, this idea of what's called basal metabolic rate, BMR, that is the lowest rate that your body, the lowest energy level that your body is going to convert calories. Usually, um, 
you reach that when you sleep, your BMR. So it's the lowest, yeah, your body converting calories for energy. It's the lowest rate. So it's called the basal metabolic rate. And T3 and T4 control that. And yes, bad news, boys and girls, as you get older, uh, those hormones get a little less in secretion and your basal metabolic rate actually gets slower. For some people, uh, there are some people it doesn't, but the majority, uh, in other words, it doesn't take as much uh, food to, uh, to gain weight or to uh, you know, maintain the basal metabolic rate. Calcitonin is a hormone that is released in response to blood calcium ion levels. It's one of those hormones that's controlled by that. That was one of the three functions or three methods of how hormones are controlled is blood plasma calcium levels. Calcitonin does that. So, and like it says there, it decreases blood calcium ion levels. And how's it do that? It increases the amounts deposited in skeletal bones and it decreases the amount that's being absorbed. It also helps increase the kidneys in secreting calcium ions. So it's really important calcium levels in your blood. If you don't control those, it has an effect on muscle contraction. If you remember all the stuff we covered with muscle contraction, calcium was the part that bound to or, or would, would bind to troponin, pulled tropomyosin over, allowed the myosin head to reach up and form a cross bridge and pull. So um, these are disorders if something's going on with the thyroid gland. Just not all disorders, just a few. Um, not enough, uh, it's called goiter. Uh, if your body's lacking iodine, remember, it can't synthesize T3 and T4. So as a result, the uh, thyroid gland gets super swollen. And well, can you see that? In fact, I'll just make this big. So yeah, see her throat down here in the bottom? That's simple goiter. That's a iodine deficiency. Um, this one, uh, cretinism, myxedema, that's a deficiency of uh, the T3 and T4. Um, yeah, infantile hypothyroidism. Uh, this is not enough of the T3 and T4. And cretinism is an undeveloped uh, basically mature, under matured upper nervous system. Too much of the thyroid hormones causes Gray's disease. And you see how her eyes are kind of um, bulging. The key for that is if you can see the sclera right here at the bottom where the eyelid is, not really supposed to see that. And you can also see her throat's kind of swollen. So that's Gray's. It's an autoimmune disorder. It's where antibodies attack the receptors on the thyroid gland and they mimic the action of TSH. So the thyroid thinks it's being stimulated to produce hormones, but it never stops. And so as a result, it does cause swelling and like some of the things here, elevated metabolic rate, sweating, rapid regular heartbeat, nervousness, weight loss, all those things. All right, we're gonna go just a little further. Um, parathyroid glands. I showed you those in our lab model. They're on the back of the thyroid. So here there's two on this side, two on that side. They're really small. Uh, they produce parathyroid hormone, which it does the opposite of calcitonin. If somebody's calcium ion levels are bottoming, bottoming out too low, parathyroid hormone is supposed to increase that. It increases the amount that's absorbed from bone. It decreases the amount that's being deposited. Uh, it also decreases the kidney from releasing calcium ions in urine. So it's supposed to raise calcium ion levels. Um, any imbalance with either calcitonin or PTH, parathyroid hormone, you get hypocalcemia or hypercalcemia. Hypocalcemia causes a contraction of all muscle groups and firing of neurons. They're called tetanic contraction, like whole body cramps. Hypercalcemia does the opposite. Um, it actually depresses the nervous system. So if you have too much, you get sluggish reflexes, uh, maybe can't breathe as good. So, and then we'll do this last one here, and then we're gonna stop and I'll do another video. So 
adrenal glands remember they sit right on top of the kidneys this is actually a really good picture so there's there's that guy I'll make this big there's the adrenal gland here's the kidney this is called the capsule the adrenal capsule goes around the outside all organs and glands have a capsule by definition you have the adrenal cortex and then the middle part of that is called the adrenal medulla the cortex produces up to 31 different hormones we're going to talk about two and the medulla is directly connected to the nervous system and it releases and it produces and releases epinephrine and norepinephrine it's part of the fight or flight response so you need to know where they're found they're right on top of the kidneys they're pyramid shaped I showed you the cortex the medulla so I guess we're gonna go over let me just look yeah okay so the adrenal medulla first and uh, you'll have this in front of you but it's that little area there and I went over in the lab I said on the slide how you can tell you're in the medulla it has these white spaces those are actually the veins in the in the middle part veins have very thin walls and so they don't they look like a white space on a slide but that's the adrenal medulla it's directly connected to the sympathetic nervous system and when they get stimulated they release epinephrine and norepinephrine so both those uh, both of those um, both those are going to increase heart rate blood pressure breathing rate you can see it there um, norepinephrine makes the heart contract with more force pumping more blood um, yeah increase in blood pressure breathing rate so that's what those do now hormones of the adrenal cortex so that's just outside layer like I said there's up to 31 of those we're gonna do two of these uh, the one called a mineral corticoid because it causes the kidneys to conserve uh, sodium ions so like a mineral but um, that hormone causes the body to like I said the kidney tubules to reabsorb sodium ions and so um, anyway that's very important wherever water excuse me wherever sodium goes water goes so that's very important it helps the body conserve water and it also helps maintain blood pressure um, cortisol is, can be kind of an evil hormone in that uh, cortisol uh, can actually make you gain weight and if you're stressed your body produces more of it it's called a glucocorticoid what it's really supposed to do is it helps maintain blood glucose levels between meals so your blood glucose doesn't bottom out that's what cortisol does and uh, like I said it's it, it makes your body take non carbohydrates lactic acid um, proteins um, all kinds of things and it makes the liver convert those into glucose it just makes sure you have a constant supply of glucose if you have too much cortisol in your blood that's it can make you gain weight because your body always has plenty of energy so whatever calories you're eating gets stored as extra calories all right I'll start with the pancreas next